subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to be taking a little bit of a look here in the E-mini S&P. You see this pattern right here? That's 382. You see this pattern right here? This was 0 0.50. This took uh, four days. This has taken three days. Uh, be really careful up here, folks, because if we get down into – remember, we were up 900 points in one day and then 500 the next. So if we start giving this back – you're looking at A, B, C, D, and that's going to take us down to our basic price objective that we're looking at is somewhere between 3,100 and 2,700 in the S&P. It'll probably happen very fast. Remember, we have a lot of things occurring. Tomorrow, by the way, we have uh, today we have Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, and then tomorrow we have Peter Elides on Monday. We're going to have Bill Meridian of um, Cycles Research. Vienna, Austria, and so uh, then I've got a couple of Adrian Tilgeray will be on Thursday, plus I got a few other guests uh, in my pocket here. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, chat with them. I wanted to uh, bring to your attention, you notice this pattern you're seeing right here. Uh, this is basically the same pattern that our good friend Jeff over there in Philadelphia, just get this up here, showing the Canadian dollar. This is the exact same pattern, folks. Only it's with the Canadian dollars. These these patterns repeat on anything that is actively traded and has any uh, volume at all. Well, you can see this is a perfect pattern. There's your 382 retracement, and there's your ABCD to the downside. The reason why this is good is because you know how much you risk here. If you get much above the 618, you know you're wrong. But if it works, look at the look at the ratio. You got about a four to one ratio on that. So let's give a sound of one hand clapping for our friend Jeff because it's a beautiful pattern the only thing I would critique is I don't like black backgrounds but that's just my personal preference if you like it you know do what you like because you only go around the spinning wheel once in life and the clock is only round, uh, uh, round once and so you've got to be able to use the time that you have left that's for absolute certainty now the pedal to the metal. People are asking me, why am I so bearish? Well, folks, I'm going to bring up here a chart. I'm going to go back to history books back into the year of 2008. Okay, and here's what we're going to be looking at. Okay, here is 2008. Okay, now this was this picture was from when I was writing the letter. I started in 2007. And on this day right here, on March the 5th, I said this was going to be the largest rally in the stock market since 1938 well it was the largest ever didn't know it at the time but the reason why i'm showing you, you see this arrow right here okay this is what's just happened in our market the last three or four days the market was breaking down badly and then all of a sudden the market exploded to the upside for three days now if you did the work yourself and went back and looked at the high here and then the low right there Johnny's raising his hand. There he is again. Johnny, sit down, sit down. Everybody knows it's 0 0.382. But God bless you, my son. Keep up the good work. It's exactly 382, okay? And that move was a 65 to 7% move in the Dow Jones, a little bit uh, less in the S&P. And then you can see what happened after that. Then we have the three drive to a bottom pattern right here. I saved this because I knew that someday this was going to be <laughs> – People would say, gee, wow, I got one right after 17 years. Well, occasionally you pick up a blind hog in order to feed yourself. But anyway, that's what we're, there's where we are right now. And the fact that this ratio has been up, we've had this three days in a row, and it's not gone above the three. Two. Last night, folks, this, I was watching it. I was, I, unfortunately, I stayed up all night because I had a, a short position on in the S&P, and I knew I was going to get stopped out because I, I sold it at uh, 10. 38.10, and I had a stop at 38.22, and I got to 38.20. 
a 38, 19 and a half. And I said, well, might as well go to bed. This is over. And so I went to turn back off the TV or turn off the thing. And I saw it was trading at uh, 37, 96. And from there, it went all the way down to uh, 39, uh, 36, uh, uh, 30, excuse me, 37, uh, uh, 45 or something like that today. Anyway, that's 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 what that's what, that's why I'm looking. This may or may not repeat. I don't know. If we close really strong today, folks, and the Dow's up another couple hundred and the S&P's at 38, uh, 28, 38, 30, anything above 38, 20, this thing's going to go higher. But if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, then that's when the pedal will meet the metal and you're going to be uh, – you don't want to be on the long, wrong side of this one because this next leg down – they're not going to take any prisoners. This thing's bouncing up and down pretty good. And believe me, when they do you know, ring the bell the next time, it's going to be a, a, a pretty significant ringing in your ears. You're going to be able to hear it pretty good. Are you noticing, folks, when you're watching this, the Dow will rally 500 points. You blink your eyes, and it's giving it all back. I mean, other than Monday, that's what's happened on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So... I'm just alerting you to the fact of, you know, where we are. Okay, now, I had a couple of questions that people were asking me about, and that was the uh, – we had a, a really, uh, really nice trade in the natural gas. I wanted to get this up here to show you. Uh, we, sh we did the daily because it was a perfect Gartley. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Just a minute. The old, the, they call me wrong click Larry sometimes. Hold on here. There's where we are. Here is the natural gas. Now, this is – the 15-minute uh, chart, and all I wanted, this is where we had the Gartley forming on the daily right down here at 6.30. We bought it at 6.33, and uh, we sold it today for uh, 6, uh, 6.93. That's 60 handles. You multiply 60 times 100 because it's $100 per point. That's $6,000, and that was within a risk of 500 bucks. That's a 12-to-1 payoff, folks. You don't get those very often. But we've shown this many times on the daily. That's where we were right down here. That was a 78% level. So let's pay attention to that one. Now there's another one. Believe it or not, I haven't done anything today because I'm a little nervous on all these different markets. But we've got another one that's bouncing around at one of those little famous numbers. And if I can find it, and I hope I can, I'm going to show it to you. Oh, why do I say that and then I can't find it? Shut the front door and raise the rent. Ah, oh, boy. Do the work yourself, folks. It's the wheat market. And uh, oh, you know what? I do have it. What am I talking about? Shut the front door and raise the rent here. There's the wheat. Okay, here, if you like Fibonacci and you like 786, there you are, boys and girls. Here it is right there at $8.73 was the low. And remember, this thing was limited up about three and a half months ago, trading at $13. Everybody wanted it at $13. How many people want it now? Johnny, sit down. I know there's only a few people that want it. All right, folks, I'll stop doing that. Anyway, this is where we're standing right here. If you see a print at seven, at 870, this thing's going to go a lot lower. But you have an ABCD, and you have a beautiful pattern that's right at the 78% level. Look, it went through the 618 like it didn't exist, but that's because there was a bigger pattern there. That's why. Hey, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I had a question about, you know, why I don't use Elliott Wave. Uh, two reasons. One, I have a hard time uh, counting seven ways. I can count to seven. It's when I get to eight that I have a difficulty. But actually, what it is is, uh, you know, I've been around this business a long time. And when I was in Pismo Beach, I had that uh, really nice trading house there that acted like a hotel for many people coming in. And I had the best Elliott Wave people in the world coming in there. I had the ones from Europe coming in. I had Glenn Neely, Bob Miner, um, who was a couple others that were in there. Uh, one of Prector's guys, but he was away from Prector at the time. He was no longer with Prector. But uh, I always had trouble with them arguing about whether it was a three or a five. Folks, uh, what I did is if you look at this chart that I posted up here, this is right out of Gartley's book. And what he was, remember, he did this in 1937. That was before we had, uh, you know, uh, Ralph Elliott came out with his Elliott Wave stuff. A guy that was doing similar st stuff during that time uh, was Jim Wyckoff. Rich, excuse me, Richard Wyckoff. He was doing the same. They were all friends. They knew each other. But you can see here, all I'm looking for was just the ABCDs. I wasn't worried about this little stuff in here. I wanted to be able to see the ABCDs. All I try to do is I match an ABCD with a Fibonacci ratio, expansion or contraction, whatever it happens to be. And at that particular point, I know where I stand. I don't care about the fundamentals. They can do whatever they want to. They can lie to me, cheat me, whatever they want to do, but they can't hide from me because if prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. That's all I do, folks. I try to find these patterns, and that's what I do. And, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. In fact, I had a conversation just before. Uh, one, of our, uh, one of our folks is doing extremely well, but he had a bad day yesterday. And, uh, well, big deal. That happens all the time. And I told him, I said, you know, it's just like if you were in the cold calling business. You don't stop calling people just because 10 people say, you know, go to, go to Hades or something like that. No, you keep going till someone says, yeah, you know, I think I'll buy that. And you might have to do that 50 times before you get it. But when you get it, you know you've got a winner and that's what the odds are. And that's what you're doing when you're trading. You don't know which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. We always make a joke here about Warren Buffett. The two rules is, you know, no, rule number one is don't trade, don't take the losing trades. And rule two 
you know, don't violate rule number one. Well, that's really great. That means you're not going to trade at all. So if you don't have any risk, you don't have any opportunity. And I don't know if you know this or not, but in Chinese literature, the words risk and opportunity are written exactly the same way. It's how it's used in the sentence on what the meaning is. So it's the same way in trading, folks. It's either risk or opportunity, so you gotta figure out which one you're gonna deal with because you're gonna lose a lot. It's like breathing in this business. You know, and believe me, you do have these losing trades and you know, sometimes they lose, sometimes they win, but by golly, that that's what you're looking at here. So anyway, that's what that's what I that's what I try to do. I mean, I know the Elliott Wave stuff looks really great and I and I see the thing and, I, and Jeff Huge is really good at it. He'll be our guest here uh, in about uh, 10 minutes and uh, he he'll he'll show you what he's looking at in the Elliott Wave, but all I do is I look for the ABCD patterns. I watch for the Fibonacci ratios and that's what I wrote that book about trade what you see, not what you think. Folks, trading is about not thinking. Trade what you see, not what you think. I mean, my God, listen to the news that's out there today. There's going to be more oil. There's going to be less oil. There's going to be a war. There's not going to be a war. China is bringing their ships into Taiwan. I mean, there's so much stuff out there. If you start listening to that stuff, you're going to go wacko. And that's why I watch Frasier every evening, because at least with that, I get a few laughs, and I don't have to listen to what's going on in the news. Now, someone brings something to my attention. Yes, I might go to the news and look at it just to see how the market reacts to it. But I don't know what's going to happen next, and no one else does either. So the faster you understand that, the better off you're going to be. Remember this little motto. It's not what you think. It's how you think. And so you got to reverse your thinking and, uh, you know, try to find out something that works for you. And this works for me. I don't care about the news. In fact, I'll go into a report. I'll go into anything as long as I can see a pattern and I know what my risk is there. Those are the two factors that I have to have. If my risk is there and the pattern is there, it's a done deal. Just like Curly. Remember in City Slickers? One thing. You got to do that one thing. Well, that's what I do is I look for those two things, actually, the pattern you know, and the ratios coming together. And remember now, sometimes when the patterns and ratios come together, there's something that is amiss, there's something wrong. And that, those two things are really wide-ranging bars coming into those, okay? And if there's a gap in there, okay? That tells you that, uh-oh, be careful. There's an unknown out there, and we don't want to be in the unknown area. We want to be in an area where we have a rough idea of where we want to be, and that's uh, that's what I try to do here, you know. And sometimes I do better than others, but you know that's it. Let's go back over to Germany now, and we're going to take a look at the German DAX. It's been under a tad pressure, just like the rest of the world here, and you'll see where we are right now. It had one heck of a rally on Monday, like everything else in the whole world, and. Um, You'll see here that we've made a really nice uh, butterfly bottom down in here. We're having a nice rally right now. In fact, it was uh, uh, not a surprise because that, you know, said there's a perfect A, B, C, D there. I mean, even a third grader that can, uh, you know, pick up marbles and count to three could see that one because you have nothing more than a beautiful A, B, C, D pattern coming down. There's your expansion ratio setting right there at 1.618, and there's your rally coming up right now. Notice the rally now has been equal to the one that we had right before. There's that three-day rally again. This one, this three-day rally, is setting where? Johnny, yes, you're absolutely correct. He's got his sign up, 382. Johnny, you're spot on today, buddy. Keep up the good work. So anyway, sometimes they work, sometimes they, they don't. On Monday, the 382s got blown out of the water so fast, it looked like a torpedo that had backfired, for heaven's sakes. But it didn't work. you know. But the others, sometimes they work. Now we're going to go back over to the UK, and this is basically, the, the, the London market is basically all uh, foreign stocks in this uh, FTSE. That's why it trades... Um, I, not very many people trade it, but because it's UK, we have so many friends there. The patterns are good, but it's you know it's you know basically like it's a futures, but it's like an ETF, and uh, that's what you the, you can see the patterns here. We're running up against a 3A2 here also, so those are just a few of the things that we're looking at uh, looking at here today. So I hope I made myself clear. Trade what you see, not what you think, because if you got that going for you. You got something good because do you know exactly where you stand? Because when these patterns fail, it's telling you that you are wrong, and so don't be long. And if you're short, 
just stay out of the way because you, you when these things fail folks they fail big time and that's the whole key you don't want to get involved in that so let's uh, let's remind ourselves it's not how much money you make it's how much money you don't lose now we're going to have a break here uh, coming up very very shortly with our good friend Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights and uh, Jeff is always great he's got some really good things tomorrow will be Peter Elides on Monday we'll have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. It's been a while since we've had Bill on. He's back in the USA, as Bruce Springsteen would say. We'll be right back with Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. May God bless. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, on the line, fresh from his trip to Europe. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing real well. How are you doing, Larry? Pretty good. Did you get any inside information over there? I heard that the Queen passed away. Is that true? <laughs> you might be right about that. Yeah, it was on TV just a bit. Anyway, did you get any uh, insight while you were over there? Well, you know, I did. Um, you know, obviously, um, we shouldn't underestimate the fragility of the economic uh, situation in uh, Europe right now. Uh, particularly their banking and financial system, which I think uh, we did see a bit of a shakeup, especially over in the U.K. Uh, when we found out who was swimming naked when the tide went out, it happened to be their national pension fund, which had levered up their fixed income portfolio and traded a bunch of interest rate swaps against it. And when the margin clerk started calling, uh, the Bank of England had to step in and backstop the entire system. 
Wow. Well, listen, your first chart today, it goes back to the same thing, 10-year Treasury yields. Uh, you want to talk about that because you've been very spot on in this. So what are you thinking? Well, I do. I, I think that 10-year uh, Treasury yields are probably the key to everything. A lot of people are talking about the dollar, et cetera. Well, the dollar is just following rates higher. Uh, money is flowing into the U.S., and U.S. assets are, are basically, you know, deemed to be the, the safe haven at this point. And my suspicion is that this breakout of a 40-year downtrend in 10-year bond yields uh, has much, much higher to go. It might not go straight up. We've got a bearish call on the market right now on stocks. And I think if stocks do go the direction that we're looking for in 2023, then we could see money pour into treasuries on a rotational basis. But longer term, looking out uh, at least a couple of years, I think the um, – uh, you know, the, the wind is going to be in our face in terms of the bond market. And, and I think rates have uh, much further to go, possibly as high as 6 percent. Wow. Now, the next one is very interesting because it's uh, it's showing the uh, breadth of the market. And uh, my goodness, it certainly doesn't look good. Even with this uh, two, three day rally that we've had, it uh, doesn't look too good. No, it doesn't. Uh, cumulative net new highs are just absolutely collapsing. Uh, they're much worse than the NASDAQ market, which is the lower frame. Uh, we've taken out initial support, trend support, mm -hmm. now critical support. And, you know, we're just in a free fall. Uh, but there's a lot of weak, you know, secondary stocks in that market. And, you know, a lot of money is rotated into higher quality stocks as a place to hide. And we're seeing that in the NYSE data where we've just broken initial chart support after first breaking trend support. But I think that the NYSE market is going to follow the NASDAQ straight down. It does not look good, Larry. Yeah, that certainly doesn't. You know, I mean, and not only that, there's there's very little fear in the market from my perspective. And what I, you know, I, I talked to some people, you know, and uh, they, they basically say, well, we're going to buy on a dip and stuff like that. And I'm... Uh, and I think that's great that they do, but boy, there's there's just not anything like there was in uh, in 2008, and, and especially uh, in 2000 when we had the dot com. You remember those folks? They didn't even know what hit them till it was down 80 percent. Well, I think that the uh, the current cohort of bullish investors will probably fall into that same camp eventually. Mm -hmm. Uh, this next one's very interesting to me, uh, Jeff, because I don't look at liquidity too much. Do you want to explain to me and the folks what you're talking about, liquidity drying up? Yeah, you know, um, as many people who uh, know me from my prior life would, would know, as I ran a trading desk at Merrill Lynch for a number of years back in the 90s, and that was, you know, the fast 90s with the, with the tech boom. And, you know, when we got big orders to sell, we would call the companies, okay? We'd call up... Medtronic and let them know we got 500,000 shares for sale from an institutional investor and Medtronic would buy their own stock back. And as you know, corporations have really been funding most of the liquidity in the market. They've levered up their balance sheets. They've used that debt to buy their equity back and they've been doing it at an extraordinary rate. That is drying up. Um, we've gotten Whoa. to the point with interest rates turning up the way they have. Um, Corporations are not not as active as they were, and we're seeing it show up in the volume numbers. What we're looking at right here on the top frame is NYSE total volume on a monthly basis going back 15 years, and on the bottom frame, NASDAQ. And you can see this huge spike up in volume since around 2020 with all the liquidity that was pumped into the system. But that is fading fast in the wow. last, uh, really, uh, 12 months. We can look back to uh, November of last year. Uh, where it peaked in the NASDAQ, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's come steadily down. We did have a couple of spike-up months, but that was, it was mostly selling, okay? And uh, you can see the free fall in price that, that came with it. I mean, the market is an inch deep and a mile wide in terms of its liquidity. You go and try and sell 100,000 shares, and you will take the market down 50 basis points, no problem. Wow, I know. I, I th this is you know, when you stop and listen to what Jeff said, folks. I mean, the companies buying back their own stocks means they're double leveraged, and that is that is really dangerous in a market that's going down. That's for sure. Holy cow! Okay, you know, the next as that gonna... liquidity dries up, I just expect uh, you know there to be no bid for stocks. There's going to be a vacuum there at some point, and uh, you know the move to the downside is going to probably 
uh, rival what we saw in 1987 when that day comes. Mm -hmm. Well, the next one is the breadth thrust. Now, is this also related to the liquidity, Jeff? You know, because I I really don't follow these indices. So, you, if you could explain to me the difference between the breadth and the and the liquidity. Sure. So, totally unrelated. I'll just tell you what uh, this is a this is an indicator uh, that was developed by a guy named Humphrey Lloyd. You might remember him from the seventies. Sure. He wrote a book sure called do. I met him NYS. before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. NYSE Moving Balance System was his book. He wrote it in 1976, and he came up with this idea that you need to have these super overbought uh, uh, days. And what his, his, his indicator basically takes this, this uh, moving uh, balance to buy, and when it gets down a 10-day moving average basis, when it gets to over 80%, that's a super overbought condition, and it tends to represent a very credible breadth thrust, meaning that all stocks are going up, and it indicates a very reliable long-term buy signal. Well, as you can see, they're very rare. In fact, we haven't had one since, you know, the early 90s, right? Mm -hmm. And, in fact, the closest we got was, you know, the last two spikes, one which occurred in um, uh, November of 2021 after Pfizer announced that they had come up with a vaccine for COVID, right? And the one prior to that was right after the Christmas Eve uh, low in uh, 2018. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we got these big incredible breadth thrust, nearly 80%, and they resulted in pretty durable rallies. Well, everybody's talking about how this two-day rally we had off the uh, September 30th low is, mm -hmm. you know, the beginning of a new, we've double bottomed and we're going into a new bull market. Well, this isn't even showing up in anything that matters. We're at 55% on the breadth thrust measure. It's, mm -hmm. it's not even close to a level that we would uh, consider to be a credible breadth thrust or indicative of some sort of a reliable long-term buy signal. So um, nothing to, to really uh, pay attention to at this point. I'll have to go back and look at this. Uh, Humphrey Lloyd was a physician. I do remember that. I had, uh, I had dinner with him once in Chicago with a couple other people, a very nice man. But he died, yeah. he, he died very young. He was, uh, he was only in his 50s, I think, when he passed away because it, uh, it's been a long time. But uh, thanks for br bringing that up. I'll have to take a look at it again. Now, the next one we're going to be taking a look at here, if you'll just stay with me one more second. We've got the, the break coming up, so we're going to kill a little time here because this next one is extremely important. Well, they're all important because your charge is so great. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the new highs and new lows. Okay, Jeff? You bet. We'll be right back, folks. Jeff Huge of Alpha Insight is our guest today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and we're looking at the new lows are looming ahead. Boy, it certainly looks that way. This is uh, an Elliott wave. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are you What are you looking so, here? This I see your, your waves that you got marked up there. I mean, I can see the ABCD patterns clear enough, but it's uh, it's very clear to me that it looks like we're headed down. It, it's my view that uh, the the June lows were primary wave one. And that the rally into the August 16th high was primary wave two. That means that we're in the early innings of primary wave three down, which should be a very powerful plunge. And it looks like it is starting out to be that right now. Now, we've got a lot of rhetoric from talking heads in the financial media talking about how the market double bottomed on, you know, September 30th and that this is going to break out seasonal patterns favor all this stuff. I don't think that's going to play out this way. This looks like. Wave one down at an at a intermediate degree, probably ended uh, September 6th. Then we got an intermediate wave two, which rallied up into that uh, September 12th high. Then the collapse into the September 30th low looks like minor wave one. And the rally that we're in right now looks like minor wave two, and it might have already ended. Uh, we think it's possible. We'd give it a little bit more lat uh, latitude. We think it could possibly get as much as the 50% retracement, which would take us to about 38.50, and that would run right mm -hmm. into that downward sloping trend line. But I don't know that it's going to get there. I don't think it will. Uh, my view is that we're going lower. We're going to go hard down. Once we take out the September 30th lows, I expect an utter collapse. Uh, I already laid out the conditions. There's no liquidity in the market. And mm -hmm. that is why uh, there will be no bid for stocks once we break that September 30th low. Now, that, that's a scary situation if, in fact, we see that because I saw that in, in um, October of 1987. But that was and ended up being the best buying opportunity of the, um, of the 1980s. But uh, here's the Elliott Wave uh, count that you have, which I, I can see that clearly enough. Now, when I try to do it myself, I come up with all kinds of – you know, different numbers. So tell the folks what you're looking at here as far as targets. Yeah, you know, it's a subjective uh, approach. And, and we've looked at the uh, advance coming off the March 2009 low uh, as being cycle wave five and possibly the end of a 90-year uh, super cycle that began back in 1932. And so mm -hmm. the 2022 high in January of this year really puts an end to um, a, a very, very large degree advance certainly cycle degree, possibly super cycle degree. And so what we're looking at is a decline that will retrace at least 61.8% of that 2009 advance. And we're expecting it to unfold in five waves down. And if it does, then that would confirm our suspicion that this is also the end of super cycle wave three, because five waves down is the beginning of a new uh, downward trend at cycle degree, which means that we would then uh, get some kind of a recovery bounce. That would be a, a B wave, and then we'd have a final C wave at least. So the first wave down is wave A. And, and Larry, we think it's going to unfold in three more waves. The first one will be primary wave three, which could carry down to around 2750 to 2400 range. 
then we should see a, a shallow lateral consolidation, which will be um, wave four to the upside, and then a final wave five plunge that should carry the S&P down to the 618% retracement, which comes mm-hmm. in at 2250. That's also around the 200-month simple moving average and a prior fourth wave extreme low from that cycle wave advance. And our view is that will terminate cycle wave A down, and that will set us up for a counter trend move that could retrace about 50% of that entire decline before we see wave C carry to new lows in order to uh, complete super cycle wave four. That entire process could take years to unfold. We expect Mm -hmm. somewhere in the neighborhood of around three years minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll certainly have you on again once before three years, that's for sure. Now, the next one, (laughs) you've got a a position that's actually long, that's actually working pretty good. This is uh, PG&E. Every now and then, uh, we're able to find opportunities, even in a bear market, to make money on the long side. PG&E Corp., which is Pacific Gas and Electric, uh, the Mm -hmm. West Coast utility, they primarily produce nuclear power. And so they are the largest Um, clean energy producer on the West Coast, uh, nuclear power. And uh, the stock was recently added back to the S&P 500 last week. And Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to report earnings, I believe, uh, at the end of the month, around the 27th or so of October. Um, I think the breakout that we see here above 13, 13 and a half carries to around 18 and a half. The stock is now 15 as we speak. Uh, This was actually our top trading idea of the week. It went out to our newsletter members. uh, It's a premium Mm -hmm. service that we offer uh, related to our newsletter. We call it Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab. And this was Mm -hmm. yesterday's top idea. It's still fresh. So I think that this stock has legs to 1850, possibly even higher. Maybe $23 would be our secondary target. Uh, Mm -hmm. But at this point, a very strong stock with strong relative strength. And, you know, good um, uh, uh, good fundamentals in the sense that there's a reason people have to buy it. It's now part of a new index. And it mm-hmm. takes a while for these indexers to bring it into the fold. Well, I'm certainly familiar with PG&E because my daughter, Jill, lives four miles from Diablo Canyon. And when they were building Diablo Canyon 30 years ago, I lived about a mile from it. So uh, oh, wow. we were right there at Avila Beach when they were uh, building it. But uh, I'm very familiar with PG&E. Now, we've got to tell the folks about uh, uh, we got a break coming up. We have plenty of time to cover this next part because this is the part where you can get in touch with Jeff and get involved with his free newsletter and how to reach him and stuff like that. And because he's a real pro in this business, we're lucky to have him on the show. But tell the folks about your free newsletter, Jeff. Yeah, you know, we uh, started publishing this newsletter a little more than a year ago. We've got, uh, we're have got we actually going to put out our 14th issue on Saturday. And it's affectionately called Huge Insights, the Big Picture. Uh, mm-hmm. This is where we kind of lay out all the details in a nice narrative with lots of charts and explain exactly what's going on in the world. And, uh, you know, it's free. You can subscribe uh, by going to my website at jwhinvestment.com. Right at the top Mm -hmm. in the middle, there's a tab that says newsletter. Click on it. You'll see a picture like this pop up and a spot where you can just type your your email in and press subscribe now, and you'll be subscribed. And it will end up in your email box on Saturday. There's no charge for this. We actually get a lot of um, uh, responses from our readers saying, hey, this is great, Jeff. I really love your stuff. But how do I invest? What should I buy? And so we created this this upgraded service for members. You pay $10 a month, and you can actually get our top uh, trade idea every week. And um, that service, again, is called Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab. And just to remind you, the idea I just mentioned, PG&E, was this past week's idea. So give you a sample of what to expect. Uh, if you're an investor who, you know, likes a fresh, you know, new idea once a week, you know, we can provide that and we don't charge a ton. It's $10 a month. It's like a cup of coffee every week, basically. Yeah, uh, well, half a cup if you're at McDonald's or at uh, Starbucks, but uh, who knows? <laughs> hey, listen, we want to thank you for being with us and we'll have you on again in a few weeks like we try to do. And we're glad to have you back and. In- USA being safe and everything so stay on that green side of the grass living the dream my friend you're a class act we want to keep you with us oh, thanks Larry I appreciate it you have a great one take care you bet Jeff Huge folks Alpha Inside stay, stay tuned folks we'll wrap this up and get ready for Peter Eliades tomorrow
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I had a question from one of our listeners, and that is to talk about the Apple. We brought this up to your attention on Friday, you'll notice that we had a price objective of uh, uh, thirty-nine dollars a share. Uh, the low was at thirty-seven forty-six last Friday, and we had a very strong rally the first three days, folks. Look what happened here. We had a little four-day rally right here. We had a little four-day rally right here. Let's count the days, Johnny. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third. Oh, today's the fourth day. And where did we get to? We got to the 382 of the last move up in here, up at 146 and a half. So this is very, very important where we are here uh, in Apple, just like we are, you know, with the rest of the market. This is now if this is a really a bull market, this thing is going to explode out of here. It's just going to go like a rocket. It's not going to go to the 382. It's going to go blasting through so far. These blasting through rallies have stopped right where they should have, and they didn't go very far. So that's why I'm a little skeptical in here, very nervous, short, you know, like they say, uh, being short and scared to death. Well, that's the way you have to be sometimes, and that's me. So the uh, market could easily reverse today or tomorrow, have a monster day up, taking out 38.20, and we'd be on our way to probably a 618 retracement of the whole move down from January 4th. But I don't see that coming. And when you listen to what Jeff had to say today about breadth and liquidity, that's enough to scare you. And if you're not scared, you should be running scared and loving it, as they say in the trade with Mr. Don 
Adams, one of our really stand-up guy, terrible poker player, but a great human being. Anyway, folks, uh, that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, our guest will be Peter Lighty. Stay tuned. He'll start early in the morning uh, at 10 o'clock. He'll be probably most of the hour or however much he wants of it. And uh, we'll have a lot of great information on the cycles that he's looking at. And, of course, he's been bearish, and that's what he's watching at here, too. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And stay on the green side of the grass and do something nice for your neighbors because they need help, too. 